Engines are more than a tool to move your trucks forward. They're the beating heart. Since 1957, Packard has been delivering the latest in engine technology to our customers. Whether you operate in the vocational, line haul, regional haul, or local delivery market, you can be assured that your Packard powered vehicle was meticulously designed for maximum power, performance, and efficiency. As a modern driver, we know that you've come to rely on current engine technology to deliver results and get the job done right. But as technologies evolve, so do the skills you need to ensure your vehicle is operating in top performance. To get the best performance, reliability, and life from your Packard MX engine and its after-treatment system, please watch this video for helpful tips and information. This video should be considered supplemental to the owner's manual and not a replacement. The introduction of an after-treatment system in the 2000s improved emissions, but also increased complexity in the engines. A modern diesel after-treatment system is made up of three major components. The DOC, diesel oxidation catalyst, the DPF, diesel particulate filter, and the SCR, selective catalytic reduction. All three sections can be prone to damage if not properly maintained. DOC is designed to reduce carbon monoxide and gaseous hydrocarbons and is part of the regeneration process to burn the soot out of the DPF. Sulfur is a known contaminant for the DOC, creating harmful consequences for the entire after-treatment system. To increase the life expectancy of the diesel oxidation catalyst, use the manufacturer's recommended oil in the engine. In 2013 or newer MX engines, Packard recommends CJ4 or CK4 oil, these oils not only deliver a fuel economy benefit, they also contain low sulfur content to prevent damage to the engine and exhaust system. Relying on traditional oil or fuel additives can be harming your engine. If you are not using the recommended oil, check with your manufacturer to ensure that it's compatible with the after-treatment system. In general, when the system detects a problem with the DOC, it will set a trouble code and turn on either the check engine light or the malfunction indicator light or both. The diesel particulate filter, or DPF, is designed to trap soot, smoke, or other particulates being carried by the exhaust gases. But like any filter that traps particles, eventually the filter will begin to restrict. The system is designed to generate enough heat to turn soot into ash called a passive regeneration. In some cases, the DOC is called on as part of the regeneration process to increase the heat, known as automatic or active regeneration. Passive and active regenerations increase the engine's efficiency and reduce downtime. In some driving conditions, the engine and the DOC do not produce enough heat to allow the DPF to do its job. For example, vehicles driven frequently at low speeds, in stop-and-go traffic, or when vehicles are subject to extended periods of idling or low load conditions. In such cases, the warning lamps and indicator symbols will alert you how to take action. If you choose to ignore the DPF warning notifications and do not conduct a regeneration when required, there is a high possibility of equipment damage. The four DPF warning notifications will escalate in severity before entering a final limp mode. Level 1. Continuously lit lamp will appear. The soot level in the DPF is above the desired level and requires regeneration. Level 2. The lamp will flash every second. This is a reminder that regeneration is needed. Your current driving conditions do not lend to passive and active regeneration and soot levels continue to rise. Level three, the lamp will flash every second and the check engine light will also appear. The particulate filter is now full. This stage also initiates a derate that can only be resolved with a parked, otherwise known as stationary, regeneration. Level four, the stop engine lamp also illuminates. The soot level in the DPF is at full capacity and a serious engine system problem exists. At this level, active and passive regeneration cannot occur and the vehicle will be limited to five miles per hour. You must stop the vehicle as safely and soon as possible. The truck will need to be serviced by an authorized Packard dealer. Your vehicle may be equipped with either a two or three position regeneration switch mounted on the dash. If your vehicle is equipped with a three-position regeneration switch, regeneration activity is controlled in three ways. Position one disables regen, position two allows auto-regeneration, and position three enables manual regeneration. 
the disabled position should only be used when operating conditions are not suitable for regeneration. If equipped with a two-position switch, you will not be able to stop a regeneration if the after-treatment controller has initiated one automatically. You can stop a regeneration by turning the key switch off. Let's look at how to enable an automatic regeneration of the DPF while driving. Make sure that your two or three position regeneration switch is not in a position that will prevent a regeneration from happening. This may vary by year and truck model. The instrument cluster will illuminate various icons to indicate that a regeneration is needed. These are covered in a video on warning lamps in this series. The after treatment system requires conditions that are typically found in highway driving to regenerate the DPF. If a DPF warning lamp is illuminated, the easiest option is to assist the after treatment by proceeding to the nearest highway. Select a highway that has a posted legal speed of more than 35 miles per hour. Drive your vehicle until the DPF warning lamp goes off. This may take 30 to 45 minutes at speeds greater than 25 miles per hour. The following conditions must be in place before starting a parked regeneration. The vehicle must be stopped in a safe location. Regeneration should not occur near flammable vapors, dry grass, or other unsuitable conditions. Ensure no one is in the immediate vicinity of the tailpipe. The parking brake is applied. The engine brake switch is off. The engine is at a low idle. The DEF warning lamp is not illuminated or flashing. The coolant is at an operating temperature. No throttle, brake, or clutch is applied. The PTO is disengaged if applicable. The transmission is set in neutral. The cruise control switch is off. Once all conditions are met, you can start a parked regeneration. Press and hold the switch in position 3 for at least 8 seconds. Once the region begins, the engine will increase the RPM automatically, regardless of whether the DPF light is on or off. The engine RPM will remain elevated for 20 to 60 minutes. If all conditions are met or the DPF warning lamp remains on after the regeneration, contact your nearest Kenworth dealer for assistance. If you need to manually disable regeneration, lift up on the switch to stop the regeneration. As soon as conditions are suitable, return the switch to the center position. If the switch is left in the upward position, it would prevent future instances of automatic regeneration, resulting in a forced stationary regeneration event and corresponding vehicle damage. The last component of the after-treatment system is the SCR. In some ways, this is the most complicated part of the system for the driver. The SCR uses DEF to produce a catalytic reaction converting harmful nitrogen oxides into environmental harmless oxygen and nitrogen. DEF is contained in a separate tank on the vehicle and the level of fluid in the tank is shown in a gauge on the dash. DEF is consumable and needs to be replenished, so monitor the DEF level gauge as you would the fuel level gauge. Improper DEF quality or quantity could result in detrimental problems in the operation of the engine or after treatment, resulting in hundreds or even thousands of dollars of damage to the system. To mitigate, the vehicle is designed to give you a series of visual and operational signs. DEF warnings and indicators will escalate in severity before entering a final limp mode. Level zero. No warning or indicators will be present. DEF level is sufficient. Level one. The DEF warning lamp will turn on, indicating that the DEF level has fallen below sufficient levels. This serves as a simple reminder that the DEF tank should have been filled the last time the truck was fueled. Fill up the DEF tank and the light will go out. If you continue to drive, the DEF level will continue to drop. Eventually, the lamp will begin to flash. This level 2 warning is the last warning you'll receive before it impacts the performance of the vehicle. With level three, the DEF lamp will continue to flash and the check engine light will appear. The power of the engine will also reduce by 25%. If you continue to ignore the warning lamps and do not fill the DEF tank, power of the engine will reduce by 40%. Failure to take action may result in the vehicle speed dropping to five miles per hour. You must fill the DEF tank to at least 15% to eliminate D rates and speed limiters. If the mill lamp is also on, it may indicate that you have an issue with the quality of DEF or an SCR component failure has occurred. Please visit a dealership immediately to resolve.